speaking of debuts, mm -hmm. one Jacob Fatu made his triumphant debut last night. His much anticipated, highly awaited debut. And he's uh, presumably going to be a member of the new bloodline with Solo Sokoa and the Tongas and a reluctant Paul Heyman. Uh, yeah, uh, Jacob Fatu, how do I say this? Uh, he oozes aura that I don't know if Solo Sokoa does. And that was a, a big rumor mill, a big story, pal. When Jacob Fatu first signed with WWE, it came out, oh, Triple H and... And, uh, and, and all the creative people, they're reluctant to put Jacob Fatu on screen because he might just be better than Solo Sokoa. And Solo's the guy that they've been building. And I, and I think that kind of came true. Like, Jacob Fatu is there, and it's like, oh, wow, okay, that guy has it. What Solo Sokoa does not have, Jacob Fatu has, you know? Like, like Solo has, you know, he he has, like, a, like a nice enforcer look to him, you know, kind of like a Diesel or, like, a Batista look. But Jacob Fatu has that that extra oomph. I don't I don't know. You you can't explain it. You can't put your finger on it. You can't put it in the words. Because Jacob Fatu has that thing that's gonna naturally attract people to him. And he he just he just made his debut and the future's bright for him if he gets the, the green light to be as good as he can be. Jacob Fatu makes you go, oh. Okay, what's up here? Like Solus the car makes you go, eh, good act. So, and that's, that's the difference. You know, one makes you go, oh, okay, what's, what's he going to do? What's he going to, what's he going to say? Like, there's real intrigue. I don't feel that same intrigue when Sakawa talks or he does anything. Like, they tried that, like, the backstage segment before Sakawa walked out to um, the ring on SmackDown. So, so Solo's there with Heyman, and he does the line, Roman's not coming back. And there was supposed to be this epic, legendary moment in the, the Bloodline storyline it just didn't feel because Solo, his delivery is not that great. He doesn't have that aura the same way either Roman does or, I mean, now far too as we're going to find out from this debut from here. So, yeah, I, I can't wait. I, I'm, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I love what, what this storyline is playing out to be. I think this storyline is much better now that Roman's not the champion, which is what we were saying for a lot of really the last year of Roman's reign. Like, hey, we've got as much juice out of the Roman tribal chief champion orange as we can here. Let's explore what this looks like because there are a million Samoans, as we're saying, pal, there's a whole bloodline story to play out. There's so many layers to this. I think it's fantastic. Like, like this, this is a great like act on the show. This is a great part of the show. You got like the bloodline bit, you got the Cody or whoever's the champion piece. You got obviously the intermoving pieces, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, pal. Randy Orton's rushing out there with a steel chair. Kevin Owens is roaring with these Samoans. Like, Owens has been so tied into the bloodline for five years, basically. He's just he's always intertwined with whatever they're doing. I think it's great. It's just great television. The one moment I love, just boy, I'll get to you, pal. I love that that whole segment, pal. CM Punk's facing off as yes, yeah, Sakala, you know, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, pal. So you got Phil Brooks in Chicago. This forty-four year old man. He's standing there like angrily. And then Cody Rhodes, the great champion, this generation's John Cena, pal, the face of the era, rushes in, huge roar. Yeah! Cody! Cody! Thunderous Cody chants in the All State Arena, pal. I loved it. Um, I thought it was so well done. But yeah, and then the, the, the debut, pal. The debut. Um, but nonetheless, pal. Well, let, let, me ask you, let me ask you a side question here. Mm hmm. What what do you think the reaction from the crowd would be when Randy Orton RKO's Cody? Oh, is is he gonna get cheered? No. Do you think so? No, no, no way. No, I think people people would be like, oh, it'd be like like a like a moment of stun. You know, like wow, oh, he just like oh, oh, as this Randy's like he flip does the double flip off to the crowd. Yeah, remember, remember it was the Seth Rollins storyline in March 2015 yeah. for WrestleMania 31. Yeah. A, raw, a Monday Night Raw end of three weeks for WrestleMania, just randomly, Randy Orton standing on the steel steps, double bird to Seth Rollins. He's flipping him off. <laughs> I was like, this is so random. You've got Brock Lesnar tug of warring with the championship oh, Roman Reigns. God. And now we've got Randy oh. Orton double flipping off Seth Rollins. What is going on in this company? Anyway, that being said, pal, the reaction is going to be great. I'll ask you this, speaking of reactions, what do you think the reaction will be when Solo Sokoa is beating down Paul Heyman? He's, he's punching Paul Heyman. Heyman's sobbing. He's crying. He's Solo just beating the piss out of Paul Heyman. 
And Roman runs out there and just cleans him up. What are your thoughts, pal? You excited? Uh, do, do you think this will be after SummerSlam? Presumably, Cody and Cody versus Solo is going to be the SummerSlam match, right? That's what it looks like. So, mm. will this be before or after SummerSlam when Roman makes his big return? I think that that's at SummerSlam. Like that, at that SummerSlam. screams. That screams like a SummerSlam. Moment. So, like, Maybe so, like, a, after the match, after Cody hits like seven crossroads, because you know Solo, you know Solo just squashed John Cena, so it's going to take yeah. like seven crossroads to beat him. Correct. Yeah. yeah and then, and then uh, he's going to be Solo's going to be crying, and Paul Heyman's going to be like, uh, "You'll get him next time, champ." And then Solo's just going to beat up Paul Heyman, and then that, that's when we'll get it to, to close SummerSlam. We'll get Roman Reigns' music. I, I, can, I can visualize that pretty easy. I, I can picture, yeah, Cody overcomes the might of Solo, the same guy who LA Knight, Randy Orton, AJ Styles all beat in like ten <laughs> seconds in January. Yeah, yeah, Cody overcomes him with like six <laughs> cross roads. We got Cody roaring. Like he's being beaten down. He's, got the, he's being spiked 25 times. Cody like then go, he rips his belt off. Rawr! He's like roaring. You know, we've got like the you know, Brandy's in the front row with Mama Rose, They're, like hugging each other, clapping pal. It's going to be fantastic. And yeah, Solo will lose. After the match, he'll blame Paul Heyman. He'll back him into a corner. He'll start like spiking Paul Heyman, pal. Heyman will be like on the ground. <laughs> like Heyman's like having a meltdown. He's blood red in the face, crying. Then you hear, <laughs> and like Roman just like spears solo and gets the biggest pop in the building all night. Oh, that's how I think they do it. Um, then again, they, they might not have Roman have music playing. He'll just run out. And, oh my God. It, Roman's here, John. Oh I don't know. God. No, I mean, you got to, you got to do the big, the big tribal chief pop. You got to get the, you got to play the theme music. And that, yeah. that'll set up like a, a Survivor Series match, maybe. Uh, Roman and the Usos pal versus Solo mm -hmm. and Jacob Fatu and all them. Yeah, that'd be good. I like now, that. Now, the camera, you can visualize every every listening can visualize this. The camera shot, like Solo is apparently like he's facing towards where the announce tables are. Like they're in those corners, so he's like punching Paul Heyman. Heyman's dead. You know, obviously, Roman's music hits, and then Solo does the big like the, the face pans around. He's just in. He's stunned, shock. His eyes pop out of his head. He's like. <gasps> And like Roman Reigns like marches down. Da -na -na, da -na 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 -na. He's standing there. He, he's like, who do you think you are? And he just like smacks Solo Sokoa and spears him. The crowd, the building erupts. You know, you got like Tom and Tonga and all, all the other Samoans are like, Ooh. you know, I mean, just, this is the emotion. This is the power of the bloodline, pal. Exactly what we need, pal. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. I can't wait. Whatever they do with Roman's return, it's gonna be crazy, and, and it's gonna just it, it, that's gonna do numbers, pal. That's gonna do why it's six like numbers, and, and even more. So yeah, it's gonna be big. Well, Good. I was just gonna say, and speaking of the, the big numbers, which I'll lead into this with you, pal. We touched on it in our review of Clash of the Castle, and we've mentioned it in passing in the recent weeks. With where obviously now we've got like we have a debut of Jacob Far Two, pal, as well. Roman's going to come back. It's going to be one of the, like, the moments of the year. They're going to do probably like a War Games, Bloodline v. Bloodline, like conflict match. Who knows where this leads as far as the WrestleMania match for the, the Rock, whether that's versus Roman, as far as like the leaders of respective Bloodlines facing off it. Wherever this leads, pal, and there's going to be probably another year or two of this. This honestly could go down as the greatest storyline of all time for wrestling. Now, we don't know where wrestling is in two to five years. Whether because it's already much more global now, the revenue and the numbers are all insane. They're doing ridiculous numbers everywhere. People are selling out buildings all over the globe. Very good on social medias. This stuff. This could well go down as a great storyline of all time. And I know obviously people get defensive about yes, Austin McMahon did something very similar that saved the WWE that made wrestling and you know they've lived 20 years like WWE lived for 20 years off of that storyline and that's just what it is so could we see something similar with the bloodline many would say Roman Reigns saved wrestling and deep in the heart of COVID power as we've discussed in our many shows nothing's going on Braun Strowman's getting slimed by the Miz and John Morrison as the main storyline in WWE that was WWE and then Roman Reigns came in everything's happened since so I'll throw this to you pal with where this is tracking, with Jacob Fartu now coming in, with the mil the pieces, the, everything where this is heading, could this be the best storyline we've ever seen? Absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt, pal. 
you know, the 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 Austin McMahon storyline, basically the culmination in that was when Austin and Vince shook hands at WrestleMania 17. And that was like, that left a, a bit of a sour taste in everybody's mouth. And we almost had that moment when Cody just handed The Rock his WrestleMania 40 main event. If, you know, if they had gone through with that, it just was like, yeah, we're going to have Rock versus Roman, pal, here. Worship me. I'm Dwayne Johnson, pal. And that was the storyline for six weeks. Yeah, we, I, I think we'd be talking about this a lot differently. But they saved it with the, the final boss Rock and all that stuff. And yeah, now, I mean, we just got layer on layer on layer to go. Like, they, I mean, they could go for another three, four, five more years. Hell, they could go longer than that. Mm. You know, I mean, in five years, Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu could be two of the top stars in WWE. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, look at Jey Uso. Jey Uso is like one of the top stars in the company now, too, all for this storyline. And, and yeah, I mean, just for the sheer fact that the consistency, the storyline has been really good for five years. You know, it's a little bit of a down period, like in 2023. That was overall, after the Sami Zayn stuff, it was overall, I'd say, a down a downturn. But still, some good stuff were produced. Just in comparison to what it was in 2020, 2021, and 2022, we did see a bit of a dip last year. But still, to be at the top of like the heap of wrestling for five years and only getting better, or not getting better, but just being the potential to give us more and stuff that are that is better... It's pretty remarkable, and yeah, I mean, and just like like you said, with interest and the things that they did to make people watch wrestling again, it, it's yeah. big. Yeah, I mean, this feels a bit like well, like the debate. If we're having this mini debate of the Austin McMahon storyline and what that did for wrestling, what that meant versus this Bloodline storyline, this does feel similar to like a Jordan versus LeBron debate. Like, because obviously one was from the '90s, one the peak was so great, the peak was so high. Same with Austin McMahon for about two to three years. That was the thing. That was the like objective best thing in pop culture, basically. This one, the longevity is supreme. The, how, what this is doing for so many different people is unbelievable. This is making so many stars. It really is. So, yeah, it's just one to revisit. We'll revisit this in a few months, oh, yeah. in a year, two years, as it goes, because it's cool that as a podcast, we've been here to you know, give our live thoughts through the whole thing document this debate this as it happens and as it plays out so yeah just just one to watch i think pal anything else in that one pal no i'm ready to get to the next topic